This is a digital office video on the topic of using Google Calendar to save time in your working day, sharing some tips and tricks from UCD IT services. What we'll be looking at today is firstly, uh, briefly at the Digital Office Initiative and what it's about. Then we'll discuss some time management and calendaring tips. I'll go through some features in Google Calendar which should help save time in your day-to-day -day work and share some further resources. These resources are also available below the video. So what is the Digital Office? Uh, it's an initiative uh, sharing a toolkit of resources from UCD IT services around three themes, collaborating, time management and calendaring, and file storage and sharing. Today's session is about time management and calendaring, and we have a number of resources available on our website as well as a community on Google Chat that's open to all UCD staff. And again, the link is below the video and you're very welcome to join. So first of all, before we go into Google Calendar itself, sharing some general tips about time management and calendaring from IT services. Firstly, we recommend that you keep your calendar up to date. Um, this allows your colleagues to know uh, where you are, uh, when you're available. Um, we'll look at some features on Google Calendar to let you display just that. It uh, allows us to, to meet hybrid working needs. So for example, you can now indicate where your working location is on calendar, indicate if you're out of office, for example. It also um, allows us in Google Calendar to set up a team calendar to uh, help with, you know, whether it's scheduling team meetings, um, noting uh, out of office time and just keeping on top of, of schedules. And last but not least, um, and this is one of the goals of the digital office, is to minimise some of the admin tasks and emails when setting up meetings. We'll look at some features where you can share your calendar details with colleagues and also to um, you know look at somebody else's uh, schedule to see when they're available to book a meeting so you can avoid some of the email back and forth. So this is a list of the features that we're going to look at today. Um, there are nine features in total, seven I suppose standard and two um, extras um, and for this um, I will go live to the Google Calendar uh, UI. Again these slides will be available underneath the video and you will find um, images and there are links here as well to some of the articles where you can find further instructions about these. Okay, so with these, um, I'll go to uh, Google Calendar and I suppose starting from the start to uh, go to Google Calendar, you can you know find it in a number of ways. Uh, you can go to uh, Google Calendars for staff directly from UCD Connect and it will open it there. Um, you can also go from any of your other Google Workspace applications. So there's a little waffle icon up in the top right and you can see the Google Calendar icon is available here. So I'll open Google Calendar and this shows me the EAG uh, training calendar. So the first thing that we'll look at as described in our best practices is you can display uh, your standard working hours and, and location. And you can see here in the calendar, we've at uh, home indicated here as a working location and office some of the days as well. So to set that up, you go up to the little cog wheel on the top here, which is the settings menu and click settings. So there are a whole set of uh, settings here on, on the left and I'd encourage people to explore them and make sure that your calendar is set up the right way for you. Uh, here we will go to the option that says working hours and location here on the left navigation. So this brings me down So first of all, you choose whether to enable working hours and location. And this, um, you know, as it says here, people will get notified when they're scheduling meetings um, if they try to invite you to a meeting outside of those hours. So you can select and, and deselect some of your, your uh, the uh, icons here for the, the days of the week. Um, so here we have set up uh, Monday to Thursday working hours. Um, and you can see here, you know, again, there's a drop down menu set nine to five on Monday. Tuesday, I've set this as, as a half day. Wednesday, a full day. And again, Thursday as, as a half day. So this might suit somebody, for example, especially that's working part time or maybe some irregular hours. You can also set your working location here. And again, there's a drop down menu. So you can, the two defaults are if you're working from the office or working from home, you can set you know, unspecified. 
you can set another office if say for example you work from another location or from you know you're doing research with another institution or you can specify someplace else so again that will help your colleagues to set this up if they can you know see your calendar and see already oh actually Laura is in Lions Farm on this day so I might schedule a meeting another day so that's just an example so as I say, you can, you know, if you want, you can set, if you're working as a standard, you can set up one day and copy to all, which, you know, makes it quite easy. Or you can go through and you can set up um, a, di a different, um, uh, a different schedule for, for each individual day. Okay, so uh, I see this is all set up to, to my satisfaction here. Um, so I'll go back and into my calendar. So again, you can see here that I've set up home and an office here for for today for the the working location um so if you want like those settings or if you've got like a regular um schedule and a regular working working hours um and location uh, you can also do this on on a day by day basis um so if you go over to to the left you'll see a create icon here on the top left and if you click on that it brings up a drop down menu and one of the options here you'll see is working location so this lets you do it on a more dynamic day. So you can set this for one day. So the default goes to uh, today, the 13th of June. Um, so we can choose a location. I'll choose home for, for today. And again, there are other locations here. And you'll see um, the default again is for all day. But if you want, you can add a time. So I can say from um, say 2 to 5 p.m. on Thursday, this Thursday, uh, 2 to 5 p.m. I'm working at home and then your working location is saved there in your calendar so as I say two ways of doing it uh, you can go up to settings find the uh, the settings for working hours and location and set it here in a standard way and you can override that or you can do it day by day at any stage on your calendar so as I showed here you can click create and select working location or if you just click at the top of any day, it lets you add in a location there, which is which is really handy. Um, the next thing we'll look at, uh, you know, I'd mentioned there that, that your calendar would be available to, to your colleagues um, and sharing your calendar um, is, is possible on, on Google Calendar. So we'll go down and, and look at that. So this is my calendar here, the EAG training calendar. So I'll click the three dots beside it here and go to settings and sharing. And then I'll click down and the first um, item I'm interested in here is access permissions for events. Um, so by default, um, our calendars are set up so that they are um, available to other colleagues at University College Dublin. But don't worry, the default is that you see only when people are free or busy. So that means that somebody else at ucd.ie can look at your cal at your calendar and see if your time is blocked off if for example you're you're noted as working in another location um and um yeah they can choose whether to schedule you or not you do have the option here if you want to to make your calendar open so to you know be available to all of your colleagues at ucd.ie um and that's saved there that everybody can see all event details um I know some people mightn't be that comfortable with that, um, but what you can do is you can share your calendar with specific people or with Google Groups as well. And this is helpful, for example, if you wanted to make your calendar details available or visible to your immediate team. And this can also be helpful if you want to share or delegate your calendar to somebody else. And that depends on the permissions you set. So you can see here, um, the EAG training calendar is, is shared with a number of people, um, but the permission levels are a little bit different. Um, so myself, uh, Aidan and Richard have access to make changes and manage sharing. And I look at the, the drop down here now. So that's the, the top level. So that's it, say if you wanted to delegate your calendar to somebody else, so they can manage uh, all aspects of the calendar. Uh, the other option is that they can make changes to events so they can make a change to the time and that are of an event on my calendar 
The next level down is maybe what you might want to give to, to your colleagues um, and that they would be able to see all event details so that they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't um, be able to change um, access to your event. But they would be able to see, you know, if you were booked, for example, if you just booked off um, some time as provisional or that, you know, that you know that, you know, you might go to to a particular meeting. Um, so we do recommend it for, for your immediate colleagues. And as I say, you can add either uh, individual team members or you can add a Google group here as well as in eag.recruitment at ucd.ie that has a few people included. And you can set people to only free or busy. And the good news is that you can come back here and you can update this at any time. So you can uh, use the plus button here to add people and groups and you can uh, share with specific people and then you check the permission level. I'm going to cancel that because I already have access. And you can see here that I can make changes at any time. So for example here, I might update Aidan's permissions so he can just see event, all event details. So you can see that it's very customizable and very, um, very easy to update. Okay. So that's how you would um, display your uh, calendar to your, to your colleagues as either blocks of busy or maybe go in and share it uh, so that people can see all the event details. And just to reassure people, I'll go back out of settings here, um, that even if you share all of your event of your uh, calendar details with people, you can still mark individual calendar events as private. Say if there was a meeting you didn't necessarily want everybody to know about, it could be a HR, it could be some an issue. So if I go in here and click on the calendar and add an event, one of my options here, you can see if you go down through at the bottom, there's a, a default visibility. So if I click that, there's another little drop down here. So I can make default visibility public or private. And if I select private here, and that means that only myself and people who are invited to that particular meeting, somebody who I've actually added here as a guest, uh, will be able to um, access the details of that meeting. And that anybody else who has access to your calendar will just see that individual slot as free or busy. So again, you still can you know, make individual events more private. So we've talked about um, you know, setting your, um, your location, setting your hours, and then we've talked about how you can go down to your calendar here or any calendar and change the settings to make it visible or how visible or invisible you want it to um, to display to, to, to your calendars. So the reason that that's handy is that um, you can then search for a meeting time that suits um, attendees. So I will, this is the EAG training calendar and you know, this week I want to set up a meeting with, with Laura, with myself and also with my colleague Marco. So here in the, the left menu of the Google calendar, um, you can see there is a, a, a selector of, of the, the entire calendar month of June and then meet with underneath. So I've added in my name and Marco's name and anybody at UCD there, as you start typing their name will, will appear. And you can see here that then alongside my own calendar, uh, you can see uh, Laura Toby's calendar in purple and Marco's in green. Um, so you can see then it just makes it easy to schedule. I can see when, if people keep their calendars up to date, you can see when they're available. You can also see up at the top here, or you know, for example, if I want to set up a coffee meeting, um, is there a day that the three of us are in the office? You can see our location. And as I said, with, with the privacy settings, um, you can see here that the purple, so Laura's has chosen just to share uh, whether or not she's free or busy, whereas Marco is sharing all of the event details with um, the EAG training account. Um, so again, uh, you know, the, the level of detail you want to share is up to yourself, um, but we do recommend that you, uh, you know, make your general availability um, you know, available to to your um, to your colleagues at UCD just to facilitate sharing and it just avoids that back and forth of an email chain between a few people to see when you're available. So I can see, for example, here straight away, I can see that, um, you know, this afternoon might be, you were free, might be a bit short notice. Straight away, I can see tomorrow that uh, myself, Laura, is is out of office. And then that leads me actually to see uh, another setting here that, uh, as I said, that you can actually set as well as the our office location. If you go to create, you can set an out of office. And we do recommend um, setting this if you're, you know, if, if you're going to be um, 
you know, absent if you're on holidays or on leave for some reason. You can also use this if you're going to be you know, somewhere sp specific and, and I'll explain the reason is, you know, you can customise the title to whatever it is. You can say um, at a conference, for example, um, and you can choose the, the days here. You can choose whether it repeats or not. Um, but there's two handy things here. So you can choose whether or not it will automatically decline meetings during this time that you've marked yourself as out of office in other words, unavailable, um, and whether it's only new meeting invitations that are coming in or whether you want stuff that's already in your calendar and um, new meetings to be declined. And the nice feature here is that you can set a custom message. You can say decline because I'm out of office at a conference and will be available from uh, uh, 17th June you know so that could be like a handy feature and again it um, you know allows people if they schedule you for something they'll automatically get a decline note um, from from you with with the reason with with your individual message so again a nice handy feature and then to show how that works in practice so you can click on any place in, in a Google Calendar to set up an event so I will try and set up an event here with myself and myself and Marco and I will click on Google Calendar here and then this uh, you know it's very handy that automatically uh, you, you collect it uh, you click it and it um, you know opens up an hour long slot and automatically it's added in those people so Laura and Marco that I said I was going to meet with and then this shows you as I said that when you set your office hours you can show here already even before somebody shadows and they well it's outside their working hours and it's outside Laura's working hours how about if we try for tomorrow so the 14th of June so again you can see that it's um if I'm going to uh what is it uh, 4 30 to 5 30 on a Friday evening and um, it's outside my working hours and Marco's working hours and you can see here that I marked as, as out of office so again it just makes life easier if you're scheduling meetings especially with with a few people okay so I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to schedule us for a meeting at 5 30 on, on a Friday evening um, another nice feature with Google Calendar again that um, uh, that the you know makes it makes it easy to um to manage meetings is if you're um somebody invites you to a meeting and um, but here this is a sample meeting that i set up earlier and invited eag training to so this appears as um white um so it's it's whited out in the middle until i choose to accept the meeting so if i click on it i see um you know that i have uh, options to respond so whether i'm going yes no or maybe um, and calendar has automatically set it actually to joining virtually because my working location is home but you'll see under the yes there's two options you can say yes in a meeting room or yes joining virtually and this is helpful particularly for hybrid meetings I would say that if you have a meeting room if the or as an organizer you have a meeting room booked and you can see uh, you know so I'm saying here I'm joining virtually um, so you can see straight away uh, if your uh, attendees are joining virtually or if they're joining from the room so again it just lets you plan uh, how many uh, what size room you need so some good uh, features with with google calendar um, so as i say again that you can do that you can pop in any of your colleagues over here and uh, you can see their availability straight away and of course, it's not only for this week, you can change the, the frequency to the to obviously to the week, the month, and you can use the arrows here, say, to look at, at next week as well. Again, then when I clicked on the calendar, it showed me um, the, the, the availability for all of us. And it's even better than that. Then say I decide I want to invite my colleague Richard also to, to this meeting I've decided. Again, Richard's um, availability shows up on calendar. And if I want to, Google Calendar will suggest a time that could be good for us as well. See, the suggested times. So it depends on, um, you know, how flexible you, you want to make it. I'm going to discard this one because I don't actually want to set up the, the meeting today. Um, but this just makes scheduling a lot easier. And the next feature I want to show us is about uh, setting up a, a team calendar. 
and uh, having a team calendar can be really handy so whether that's for uh, it could be a calendar where everybody would for example indicate the days they were going to be on site if you're working in a hybrid team um, you could set up a team calendar for managing leave so that everybody's leave would be logged and it would be visible in calendar. Um, you know, it, it depends on what you want. So we have, for example, here a sample on-site calendar for the digital office and an on-site shared team calendar. Um, you don't have to just have one calendar for your team. You can have uh, different ones if uh, depending on, on what's needed. Um, so to uh, create a, a new calendar, it's it's very easy. Um, again, on the, the left menu here, uh, you can see my calendars are, are indicated here on the left. And then underneath you have other calendars. So I'll click the plus icon here and select create new calendar. And anybody at UCD can do this. So I'll say this is a webinar calendar. This is and I'll put in my description as test for webinar. Or you could have like team calendar, team X calendar. Owner EAG training, I'll do one, oh, I will create my calendar. So calendar creation is in progress. My internet must be a little bit slow today. So and with that, you can see then that the that the new calendar is is created here, um, and we're going into we can go into the settings of it. So it's created here automatically on the left. So I'll select webinar calendar, and this brings me to that calendar settings. So if this is a team calendar, um, again the, the permissions and the sharing are the same for your individual calendar or for team calendars. So I can, you know, I would say be mindful of making it available to the public because that means it's available to anybody uh, who has a, a Google account. Um, but to make available for University College Dublin, maybe this one I only want people at all of UCD to see it's free or busy. Um, but here I might want to add, for example, I'll add myself to, to this calendar. Um, and with this one, I want to be able to, not just to, to see all event details, this is our team calendar. So I want to be able to make changes to events so I'll send that and then um, myself, my own account, I'm now subscribed to, to this uh, team calendar as well. And I'll go back and show you how it works. Then when I go to create an event, um, you know, this is you can add the title here and you can choose obviously as well as an event. There's options for focus time. You can set your out of office or working location here as well. Um, but if you go down here, the blue, it shows that it's, it's, this is the EAG training calendar. Whereas if I click on that, again, there's a drop down icon. So I can see straight away where I might want to add that. So um, say for example here, I might want to add it to the digital office leave, cal the, the webinar calendar that I've just created as a test is, is down there. So I want to note that, um, you know, Laura's on leave tomorrow. So I'll add a title, I'll say Laura and you will leave. Um, find a time. This one I actually want to make an all day event. Digital office uh, calendar, an all day event. Um, I won't change anything else. I'll click save. And then anybody who is subscribed to that um, digital office on site calendar uh, should see my uh, availability. Oh yeah, sorry, I said it for Monday. Uh, that if I'm subscribed to that calendar, I can see Laura A on the top. So it's a very handy feature um, and we do recommend that you create one for your team just to keep track and again to reduce some of the, the admin work. That was a whistle stop tour of a Google Calendar. As I say, the slides are below with links to screenshots and to the article links that, uh, that go through uh, all of this. I now wanted to talk about uh, a couple of additional helpful features that might be helpful um, for your work in, in Google Calendar. So the first feature we'll talk about is appointment schedules. So you can set up um, slots on the calendar and um, there is a booking page that you can then share via email or embed on a website. So this is very useful for things like office hours, drop-in clinics, if you, you know, need to facilitate individual appointments. Um, so we'll look at that. And the last feature then is proposing one-on-one -on -one meeting times directly from Gmail. And um, so we talked about looking at people's calendars where they're, um, 
you know, to see their availability. But where you don't have access to someone else's calendar, say they're outside of UCD, it's a partner, or, you know, um, some students, um, you can go into Gmail and you can suggest meeting times um, directly from that. So we'll go and look at those two last items now. So I'll go back to my calendar here. This is my uh, EAG calendar. And again, I'll go up to my create button on the top left. And here, one of the options is appointment schedule. Okay. So I'll click appointment schedule here. Um, and I'll do this to say it's test schedule, test officers, I'll say test, yeah, drop in clinic. Um, so there are various options here then. You can select the appointment duration, you know, from 15 minutes to two hours, and you can also customize it. Let's well, say 30 minutes for my appointments. Um, and you can choose whether this is a one-off or whether it's a repeating um, set of office hours. So again, it really depends on the, the context. So in this case, I'll say it doesn't repeat. Um, so I want to set some office hours for tomorrow. Um, maybe I'll set them for next week, for Monday from, um, 10 to 12 and then I can select another time on Monday look by on this particular day just by selecting the plus icon so I can say say from um, 2 to 3 30 as well on Monday and if I want I can add another date as well so you can see here it's very flexible I might say on Wednesday as well I'm available from 9 to 10 for office hours so the next option here is my scheduling window. So you decide um, how long in advance an appointment can be booked and the minimum time before they can be booked. Um, so I'll say two hours. Um, something that I think is, is a nice feature as well, especially if you're doing a lot of office hours, is that if you want, you can add a little bit of buffer time. So if you need time to prepare, for example, for a student or something, you can set yourself um, maybe 15 minutes between appointments just so you're not completely back to back. And you can also set a maximum number of bookings per day, um, which again is, is helpful. The calendars that it's on, um, so you need to check if you want, as I said, if you wanted a, a team calendar or for example, if somebody had delegated their calendar to you, if you were booking office hours for somebody, I could also put on, I'll put on the webinar calendar here, there's nothing on it. Um, but you can say bookable times won't be available during any events created or accepted on, on these calendars. So again, it allows you to customize um, the, the office hours and make sure that you're not um, scheduling uh, bookable slots when somebody else actually isn't available. And then you can add co-hosts as well to co-host the appointment. So I'm going to add myself here um, that the two of us can manage these, this appointment schedule. So again, you can go down here, you can always create a test, one of these um, appointment slots, and then you can go back and edit it is, is the good news. So you can go back and edit any of these settings. So I'll click next here. Uh, the next section, I suppose, to, to remember that uh, whichever calendar you create the booking appointment slots on, and um, those details will be displayed on, on the booking page. Um, and you can select how and where to meet as well. Um, so at the moment, um, you can select Google Meet in person, a phone call or none to be specified later. Um, you'll see that Zoom isn't currently available here. So um, if it's an in-person meeting, you can specify the, the meeting room. If you want to set a Zoom meeting, you could set none to be specified later. And then you can you, you can add details to Zoom details to the event later. You can add a description, um, you know, the office. I'm just going to drop in clinic, please bring details of your um, inquiry with you. You can select uh, various different things. So they suggest the first name, star name and email address, which are the required fields that somebody uh, needs to give to book an appointment. But you can also add an item so you can ask them to add their phone number or you could add a custom item, for example, somebody's student number if you wanted and decide whether this is required or, or not. I'll click add item here. Um, 
and then you can select um so something that's very nice is that both uh yourself or whoever is creating the appointment schedules and the person who's booking the appointment once the slot is booked you'll both get an invitation on google calendar with this description details um, and it'll automatically set a reminder as well. So here the default is to one day before. You might want that they'll get a reminder an hour before and you can add a couple of reminders if, if you want. Um, so it's always helpful. So I'll click save here. And then you'll see it's it's as easy as that. So my uh, appointment schedule now for next week is created. The live slots I've set from 10 to 12 and from 2 to 3.30 on uh, Monday. And I think Wednesday was my, my other thing. So you have options here already to, to share the schedule, whether you want to share the booking page by a link or a website um, amend. And you can uh, you know select whether you want to, to share the whole schedule, so like the whole set of these um, availability, or you can send them a, a single booking page for uh, you know for an individual um, appointment that you've set up. And you'll see here, I actually have a number um, of appointment slots set up um, on, on various test things. I'll click done here because I'm not ready to share it just yet. What I want to do is open my booking page to look at it. Um, so as I say, you can see here, you can see the details of the account that set it up. Um, you can see that it says it's 30 minute appointments and then you can add a description or some information here. And then it's as easy as sharing this link or embedding it on your website. And whoever clicks the slot then, you know, puts in their first name, their surname, their email address. And you see the field here that we set as an option to put their student number once you click book then both they and you get an appointment to uh, sorry get a calendar invitation and you can add your zoom details to that if, if you wanted so i'll cancel out here um just to say when somebody books a slot then it will show as unavailable for um anybody else who, who comes in and looks at the schedule so it's updated instantly and you can see here, uh, you can you know select an appointment time. The calendar here, it shows you what dates are, are available and not. So that's, I guess, especially handy if you're setting up um, a recurring uh, appointment slots. So very easy to use. And yeah, do recommend that, that you use that feature. Uh, just to note that if you were using this in the past, there was a feature called appointment slots. So that was um, available in the settings. Now that will be switched off in July 2024 and from then you'll be using appointment schedules um, that are more powerful anyway. Okay, so that brings us to, I think, eight settings we've looked at in Google Calendar. And the very last one um, is in Gmail actually, but it is a calendar slot. And I know this is something that we do get asked about in IT services. It's about, well, you know, I'm asked, you know, meeting with somebody from another institution, I don't have access to check their calendar. So what you can do is, you know, go into your Gmail, click compose uh, to have a new email. And down at the bottom here, you'll see there is a little calendar icon and set up a time to meet. So you can either create an event directly from your email or uh, what's very useful is to offer times that you're free, which is the first option. So this will bring up the calendar here on the right hand side of your email and you'll be prompted to find times you can meet. So whether the increments are one hour, 45 minutes, 30 minutes. Um, so today is a little bit short notice. So I'm gonna go to tomorrow, Monday, say from nine to 12. Again, the same as the appointment slots, you can add you know another slot that day, I'll say, say from two to three, two to, two to three. And I can add a date again. So I might say the 18th from nine to 10, okay? So then I've selected these dates. I'm going to click next. The event title is I call it sample meeting free project X. Um, it's uh, 30 minutes if I want. I can change that to any duration. My availability is on Monday 17th of June between nine and 12 or two to three. And then on the 18th of June, either between nine and 10. Again, there's a drop down here if you want to add, uh, you know, other information in like a description or, um, you know, whether it's an in-person or a, a phone or you want to specify the Zoom details later. And then the last step here is add to email. And then this is what you will see in your email. Um, so you will see proposed times that you want to meet. Again, here you can, you know, select your subject, uh, suggested meeting slots. Okay. 
and say I uh, will one of these ends work for you. Just click the button. And then when you send this email, uh, the person will be presented with these nicely formatted slots that they can uh, choose. And again, once they click a slot, it will send set up um, a calendar a calendar event for both you and the person you've sent the email to. It will send an invitation to you both and it will appear on both of your calendars. So it's very handy. Um, at the moment, this is available just for one other person. Um, so you can send it to, to, to one person. Um, maybe in, in time, Google will add the functionality for, for multiple. Um, but in the meantime, it just it looks it looks well and it's very easy to, um, yeah, it just makes it very easy to, to suggest times again, just avoiding that email back and forth and making life a bit easier. And how you do that again is you click compose and then you go down to the bottom toolbar and the last icon here is to um, offer times that you're free or create a calendar event. I'm going to X out of that one. So with that, um, I'm going to go back to our slide and the very last um, thing to talk about is further resources and support. So um, the slide deck itself and the links to um, all of the features that I've talked about here are available below the video. Um, I'll also refer you again to the Digital Office website, which has lots of um, information and guidance about collaborating um, just more efficiently using the digital tools more efficiently at UCD. Um, there are help articles um, you can you know submit a help ticket if you need any more help at the uh, IT support hub ucd.ie forward slash IT help again you're all very welcome you're cordially invited to join the Google workspace community on Google chat and then further afield a uh, Google calendar has a very comprehensive help center that's available online and I would also if you're maybe not familiar with uh, Google Calendar, there's a LinkedIn Learning course and all UCD staff have access to LinkedIn Learning. It's an introduction to Google Calendar and it goes through, um, I suppose, the features to get you started if you've you know come from another system. So that concludes our webinar for today. Thank you for watching and we hope these tips are useful.